Hello and welcome to follow my videos. My name is Matti Ylitalo and today our focus is on unsteady conduction. Just a second, I'll put the presentation mode. In this case uh, we use unsteady conduction but uh, steady convection. Our example uh, is this uh, sip cooling case but now the load is uh, changing. We assume that our fan is operating with a constant speed, so we can assume that uh, the convection is uh, steady. We assume also that our material is uniform, so we can handle this as a single block. Sometimes ago I made a video in which this uh, sip cooling case was uh, handled as a uh, steady state problem. This uh, sip was 20 mm times 20 mm. It was having uh, fins which length was 15 mm and both base and uh, fins were made from aluminium and we were looking at the uh, cases in which this uh, cooling uh, inlet temperature is uh, changing or this uh, heat transfer coefficient is changing and the idea was to find the maximum ship power so that uh, the temperature is below 85 degrees C. Now I ask a uh, CPT to modify this uh, SIP cooling code so that we can have a changing load. And in this uh, bits you will see the changing load. Uh, this blue line is showing that at the beginning this uh, SIP power is 10 watts. Then it's increasing to 50 watts coming down to 10 watts and increasing for a short time up to, up to 60 watts. Then uh, after that it's a tier and we are simulating quite a long time to see how this uh, ship base material temperature is uh, coming down. Here we see the problem definition which uh, set GPT gave it's telling uh, how it is handling this uh, steady convection uh, together with unsteady conduction. Here is a lot of details how it builds this uh, code and uh, it's uh, pointing out that it's uh, not a Navier-Stokes equation which is uh, cal calculated here. So this uh, heat convection uh, from surface to cooling air is calculated uh, using these heat transfer coefficients. And, uh, here some details uh, how we should uh, calculate. If we increase the number of calculation points, uh, so we have uh, better resolution but uh, that will uh, increase our run time and uh, the need of a memory. Here we see how the mathematics works. We are handling a two-dimensional conduction problem now and as a boundary condition we have this uh, convective heat flux. Here this uh, T is the temperature of the material and this is the temperature of uh, our cooling air. And on the bottom we have this transient heat flux. And the code is now calculating from each time step the average base and average fin temperatures. When I started simulations, some problems were arising. For example, the material temperature was going below the temperature of our cooling air, which is not possible. Also, the temperature was oscillating quite a lot. And I was telling to chat 
GPT that uh, this is my problem what to do now and it was uh, making changes to the code and uh, what is uh, good uh, when you're working with chat GPT is that it's uh, making this kind of very good summary of those changes at the beginning, uh, one big problem was that uh, those calculation times were very, very long. And I was asking ChatGPT that is this code using parallel computing in laptop. And it was telling that it's not used. It's uh, running on a single CPU. So remember always when you develop this kind of codes that you need to ask parallel computing code. One way to speed up your Python code simulations is that uh, you add so-called number. Here are instructions how you can add that. Here are the results uh, from an example case. I simulated uh, 900 seconds and in this first simulation I used post-convection cooling, having this uh, age value 65 watts per square meter Kelvin. In this picture you see the load profile. At the beginning it is uh, 10 watts, then increasing to 50 watts, and coming down to 10 watts, and after that there is short five seconds peak having load 60 watts and this uh, red curve is telling the base material temperature after this high load it is almost 80 degrees C and after this uh, 900 seconds it has coming down down to around 35 degrees C. In this picture we see both uh, base and fin temperatures and seems that they are almost exactly the same. As was mentioned uh, earlier, the code is calculating the average value for base and average value for fins. So these are average values, not local values. Then I calculated uh, the case for natural convection cooling. Uh, this age value was uh, decreased to 6.5 watts per square meter Kelvin, which is a typical value for natural convection case. And from these results, uh, we see that if we have the same load profile and the temperature is increasing to almost 80 degrees C, so after this uh, cooling period, 900 seconds cooling period, the temperature is uh, around 71-72 degrees C. Uh, this is a big difference if we compare to this uh, forced convection case. Then this uh, temperature was decreasing down to around 35 degrees C. And if we think about uh, the temperatures of the base material and uh, fins, it is almost exactly the same. And the case was the same also for this forced convection case. When we are analyzing time-dependent cases, it's very important to understand what is the system time constant. It tells how fast a thermal system responds to a change in boundary conditions or to changes in internal heating conditions. So it is telling how fast the temperature will approach a new steady state date after disturbance. Typically the temperature of the body is following this exponential response curve 
and here we have this uh, time and this uh, so-called time constant tau. When we are calculating this uh, tau value, we can separate two different cases. If a so-called byot number is very, very small, then this uh, body is uh, nearly isothermal. And we can calculate this tau from this simple function. But uh, in other cases, when this uh, byot number is high, we need to calculate uh, this tau value from this function. Here this alpha is the thermal diffusivity. In electronic cooling cases, and also in other industrial cases, this tau is typically a mix of these two. So in some parts, uh, this thermal response can be very fast, but as an overall, it can be very slow. Here in this table we see typical tau values. If we have a copper block which thickness is 10 mm, then this tau is around 0.1 seconds. So it's very fast response. The same is true for aluminium, fin, silicon chip. But if we have a plastic slab which thickness is 10 mm, then this tau is around 10 seconds, so the response is much slower. And if we have a concrete wall with thickness is 100 mm, then this tau is 10,000 seconds, so the response is very, very slow. I calculated this tau value for our fin cooler case. And uh, it seems that uh, for that uh, base plate, this uh, tau is around 0.01 seconds. So the response is very fast. Here we can see how we can calculate uh, this tau value for the whole system. In this left box uh, is seen uh, how we can calculate this uh, thermal capacity and on the right side we see how we calculate this uh, uh, effective surface area for our fin cooler. It takes into account also this fin efficiency. And finally when we have this uh, uh, thermal capacity and we have this uh, surface area, then we can calculate this uh, tau value. And now this uh, is calculated for this uh, natural convection case. And seems that the whole system tau value is 115 seconds, almost two minutes. And for the base material, this tau value was 0.01 second. So it's a very, very big difference. A general uh, definition for this uh, time constant is that if we have a step change in heating, so after time is equal to tau, the response is uh, 63%. If you have uh, a simulation uh, result of your system, you can get this tau value also from your results. Here is shown how you can uh, get this value from your results. Okay, that was all this time. Thank you for watching and see you. Bye bye.